Let's continue our talk on biostats. In this video, we're going to talk about positive predictive value. We're going to talk about negative predictive value. We're going to talk about sensitivity. And we're going to talk about specificity. And then we're going to close things off with a talk on incidence and prevalence. Okay, we'll start with our trusty two by two table. Our trusty two by two table, but let's do something different. Instead of looking for risk and exposure, let's do something different. Let's say you try, make a, try to make a test that would pick up HIV. Try to make a test that would pick up HIV. So let's draw our two by two table. As always, we put the disease on top, which is HIV, and then whether or not a person has it or doesn't. And then the test on the side, whether the test is positive or negative. If the test is positive and the person actually has HIV, that's correct. That positive is correct. We call that a true positive. If the test is negative and the person actually doesn't have HIV, that's correct. That negative is correct. We call that a true negative. If the test is positive, but the patient actually doesn't have it, is that a correct positive? No, we call that a false positive. If the test is negative, but the patient actually does have it, oh boy, that's bad. Is that a real Correct negative? No, we call that a false negative. We call that a false negative. Now let's do another example. So we have HIV, negative. We have our test, test, positive, negative. So I just filled in some random numbers for illustrative purposes, all right? And you know I don't like two by two tables. I prefer three by three tables. Let's make some three by three tables. So I just add the total. Add the totals here is 100. Add the totals here, it's 100. Add the totals here is 104. Add the totals here, it is 96, all right? Let's talk about positive predictive value. Let's say you go into a village of 100 people and you know that for a fact 95 of them have HIV. Well, how many people have HIV? 95 out of 100, right? 95 out of 100, or 95% of the villagers. If you do your test and it is positive, what's the chance of that being correct? 95%. We call that positive predictive value. Positive predictive value. So if the test is positive, what's the chance of the person having the disease? So we look at this column, the positive test column, and it's basically who has the disease over the general population. 95 divided by the general population. That's positive predictive value. How about negative predictive value? Let's go to a, a village, a, another village of 100 people, and you know that 99 of them do not have the disease. So that's 99 out of 100, or 99%. Because we're talking about negative predictive value, if you administer your test and it is negative, what's the chance of that being correct? 99%, right? Because 99% of the people don't have the disease. That is negative predictive value. The chance, if the test is negative, what's the chance of it being correct? Negative predictive value. So we just took the people that didn't have the disease, divided by the total population, which was 100. Done. That was easy. That's positive predictive value, negative predictive value, easy. Let's talk about sensitivity. Sensitivity. And here we're gonna use a different example. Uh, something a little bit more intuitive. Instead of an HIV test, we have a burglar alarm. And instead of looking for HIV, we're trying to look for a burglar. A burglar. Let's just fill in our numbers again. If you have a very, very sensitive alarm, a very sensitive alarm, then it'll pick up anything. It'll alarm when the AC turns on, when a cat moves by, when there's a gust of wind, it'll pick up anything. So of course it's gonna pick up a burglar. It'll pick up a cat, right? So it'll pick up anything. If it's so sensitive that it's kind of finicky, right? So a sensitive test will pick up everything. Because it'll pick up anything and sound the alarm, if it doesn't sound, then you know you don't have anything. You know you don't have anything. Sensitive test, if negative, rules out disease. We already kind of talked about that when we talked about negative predictive value. If the test was negative, what's the likelihood of there not being anything? Negative predictive value. So sensitivity is related to negative predictive value. So if your alarm rings and there's actually a burglar, burglar 
True positive. If your alarm doesn't ring, there's not a burglar. True negative. Now what happens if your alarm rings and there's no burglar? Then there's, it's a false positive, right? There's like a cat or your AC turned on. But here's the worst case scenario. What if your alarm didn't ring? and there was actually a burglar. That's like the worst thing that can happen. That's the worst thing that can happen. And when we talk about sensitivity, we have to factor this in. So we take the true positive, what the result that we actually want, and then we have to factor in this false negative. So it'd be 95 over the total, 96. We have to factor in that one false negative right the generic formula what do we do well we took true positive divided by the total of these so tp divided by tp plus fn all right and that equals sensitivity and that kind of makes sense that kind of makes sense if your alarm isn't sensitive if it doesn't ring no matter what then you're going to have a lot of burglars coming in you're going to have a high false negative it doesn't ring but there's actually a burglar all right, but the opposite is also true. If it's very, very sensitive, if it rings, no matter what, it'll ring for whatever reason, then you're gonna catch a lot of these burglars. False negative goes down. All right. So that just mathematically makes sense. So sensitivity is related to a lot of things and the easiest way to remember all the different things it's related to is just know that sensitivity has an N in the name and so does negative predictive value, and so does false negatives. All right, so anytime you think of sensitivity, think negative predictive value, which has an N in his name, and false negative, which has an N in his name. All right, that's sensitivity. Let's look at specificity. You want an alarm that's very specific, an alarm that only rings if there's a burglar. If it rings, you know there's a burglar. If it rings, you know it's a burglar. So if it rings, if it's positive, you know it's a burglar. If a test is positive, then you know you have the disease. If positive rules in disease. We kind of already touched on this topic when we talked about positive predictive value. If the test was positive, what's the likelihood of the person having the disease? So specificity is related to positive predictive value. All right, the worst thing that could happen is if you have a positive test, it rings, and is not a burglar. False positive then what is this point what is this use we want a specific alarm that's why we bought it in the first place to catch burglars so if it rings and it's not a burglar what's this use so false positive is the worst thing that can happen so we have to factor that in so we really focus on this column all right namely we take this number and we divide it by the total factoring in these false positives so it's 99 over 104 the generic formula what do we do we took true negative divided by this entire column. So true negative divided by true negative plus false positive. Now, that's a lot of things that specificity is related to. How do you remember it all? Specificity has a P in his name, right? P in his name, so it's positive predictive value. It starts with a P, so it's false positive starts with a p so anytime someone talks about specificity think positive predictive value think false positive all right think false positive done with this almost done with this we're going to talk about one more thing that kind of synthesizes all of it together see if you really understand it all right do you like to confuse people with basic concepts but then you make it confusing by putting it into a chart form or a graph form and people look at this chart and they freak out here's one they like here's a test on this side is negative a negative test on this side is a positive test these people do not have the disease these people do have the disease so people, these people that don't have the disease we call this true negative these people that have the disease true positive now here's the tricky part here this this hump is people that don't have the disease but as they fall on this side the test will say it's positive they do have the disease is that a correct positive no so we call that false positive all right 
This hump is people that do have the disease and as they fall on this side, the test will be negative. Is that a correct negative? No, they have the disease, so that's a false negative. Let's label these lines A, B, C. What they like to do is they like to shift this mid B line this way or this way. All right, so if they shift it to A, B to A, it will shift this midline and it will obliterate your false negatives. Obliterate your false negatives. False negative goes down. But as it shifts this way, then your false positives will expand. It will increase your false positives. Let's talk about what that means. False negative is related to what? There's an N in the name, so it's related to what? It's related to sensitivity. If you have decreased false negatives, then you have increased sensitivity. Sensitivity has an N in its name, false negative has an N in its name. What is sensitivity also related to? Negative predictive value. So increased sensitivity, increased negative predictive value. False positives. What is false positive related to? It has a P in its name, so it's related to specificity. If you have increased false positive, decreased specificity. Specificity is also related to positive predictive value, PPV. Remember, that has a P as the specificity. All right, so you should be able to rattle all three of these out no matter what, all right? You always link them all together. They're always related. So that's when B moves to A. How about when B moves to C? B moves this way. If this line moves this way, it will obliterate your false positives. Obliterate your false positives. So false positive goes down, but it will expand your false negatives. Increase false negatives. Increase false negatives. What is false positive related to? Specificity, right? So you have decreased false positive, you have increased specificity, increased positive predictive value. If you have increased false negative, what's false negative related to? Sensitivity. So increased false negative, you have decreased sensitivity, decreased negative predictive value. That's how we like to ask it. And if you know that, then you should be all right. If you want to cheat sheet now that you understand, then here is your cheat sheet. I can summarize what I talked about in 10 seconds, all right? So you have your two by two chart. If you want to look at the positive predictive value, you start with this number divided by the total in this column. So I'll write positive predictive value. If you want to look at the negative predictive value, you start with this number divided by the total in this column negative predictive value. If you want to look at the sensitivity, start with this number, divide by everything in this column, the total in this column, sensitivity. If you want to look at specificity, start with this number, divide by everything in this column, the total in this column, specificity. That's it in a nutshell. That's it in a nutshell, all right? I usually don't like people just memorizing, memorizing stuff, but if you understood everything we talked about, then you can feel free to memorize it, all right? Get a free pass. Last but not least, let's talk about incidence and prevalence. The sun's going down. It's getting kind of dark in my room. <laughs> Hopefully you can still see it. All right. Incidence deals with the number of new cases over the people that are at risk. New cases, new incidents. So maybe it'll say in 2017, there were 10 new cases of cancer in a group of 100 people. Now be careful. Uh, I had a question that asked in 2017, there are 10 cases, incidents of cancer in this group of 100 people. And then next, in the next year, there are another 10. Can you find the incidence of that? And people say, oh, there's another 10? Well, it'll be 10 over 100. That'd be wrong. That'd be wrong. It's now 10 over 90. Because last year, 10 people got cancer, those people are removed from the pool. Those people are removed from the pool. Those people are no longer at risk. You don't get double cancer, right? So the new population is 90. Right, so just be careful of that. Next is prevalence. Prevalence is the number of total cases over a population. So instead of incidents being 10 new cases, prevalence would say in 2017, 50,000 people were living with diabetes. 50,000 people were living with diabetes. 
the total amount of cases. Now prevalence can change positive predictive value and negative predictive value. That kind of makes sense, right? We said that in our example, you knew that 95 out of 100 people had HIV. Well, if the prevalence of that changed, then it will change that value. If you knew that only 50 people out of 100 had HIV, it will change positive predictive value, change negative predictive value. All right, so prevalence can change these values. Also, you need to know that these two are related to each other by, by time, whether or not a disease is acute or chronic. Chronic diseases, so all right, chronic, the prevalence is always higher than the incidence. So let's talk about chronic disease like diabetes. Let's say that every year you get a thousand new cases of, a di of diabetes. So a thousand. Well, what's the prevalence? How many total cases of diabetes do you think exist in the United States? Millions, millions, all right? So the total number of cases in chronic disease is way bigger because they build up over time, right? They build up over time. In acute short duration diseases, Prevalence and incidence are about the same. So my favorite example is hay fever. Maybe you have 20 new cases of hay fever every year, but people with hay fever, by the summertime, by fall, it's gone. So if you look at the prevalence of hay fever, during the spring, it'll show 20 cases, just like the incidence. And then when the summertime comes along, those people don't, no longer have hay fever, these people no longer have hay fever, prevalence and incidence are the same. That does it for positive predictive value, negative predictive value, sensitivity, specificity, incidence, prevalence. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.